Hello and welcome to the Sports Bubble Europa League Final Preview Cousin versus Cousin This might be the last time I do a show with these two because they could just pop the head off each other next Wednesday night and I could be doing it on my own from now on which so if it is like lads, thanks very much for this season. It's been an absolute honour and a pleasure to do podcasts with both of these. Yes, Fran, it's been very nice having yes. you on. We'll see, we'll see you again. <laughs> um, yes. You're the newbie here. It is. Uh, who's the older cousin? Me, John. Oh, big cousin. Um, yeah, it's an all English, the two all English European finals. I'm going to preview the Europa League first, which is tonight's video, and then we'll look ahead to Liverpool v Tottenham later on in the week. Um, but lads, just initially, before we get into it, what, what was your first thoughts when you both came through to realise you were playing each other in a final? Well, we got through and had to wait and then come through. You know? What was your first initial reaction though? Did you want Chelsea at that point? You know when it went to penalties, you were like, I want like, Chelsea. You didn't like, but I'd, no way either. I'd be happy enough want. for Frankfurt to hear uh, You'd probably prefer Frankfurt, really. Because, well, uh, Frankfurt wouldn't probably know Arsenal as well as Chelsea would like, so and Chelsea have better players than Frankfurt. Although they didn't seem to prove it that way on their second leg of the semi final, but nah, you, you prefer to play at Frankfurt, obviously, like, but it is what it is. What about you? Were you hoping for Valencia to do something? Or um, happy enough for what was... I think it was always really <clears throat> it was always really in the in the stars that it was going to be Chelsea Arsenal. So I had that in my head, like if we win this, we're going to play Arsenal. But obviously, Arsenal were winning. Um, from the first leg against Valencia anyway and they were looking like they were in a good position so it was never really as the Chelsea game was going on that tie was far tighter than the other game and you saw that Arsenal scored and then scored again and Valencia got one back we all thought it was going to be the opposite we thought Valencia Arsenal was going to be a lot tighter Yeah, but sure we all kind of knew like we hadn't seen a lot of Frankfurt but we all thought they're they're a decent team and they'll be Chelsea everybody knows who Jovic is now because of Mm. what the season's having but just Mm. before we move on and talk about the final that was some away performance from Arsenal (laughs) like Valencia proved last night to no mugs I know it'll be Barcelona so like um Arsenal seemed to be able to pull it out of the bag in the Europa League now you're saying that we haven't played the same calibre of team until probably Napoli and so on and I thought after we beat Napoli I was like we were going to get Chelsea in the final and it's like Brent said written in the stars it was going to happen I didn't think Valencia were going to stand their way even though we had an early scare at the Emirates but um, yeah I'm uh, glad to be in a European final again but <laughs> nervous obviously <laughs> Are you nervous, Brent? I'm not as nervous as Johnny, because we're at a, it's all about the Champions League. And I don't know how, but Chelsea were the ones who struggled over the line in the Premier League and got there, um, which is such a relief, because now I actually think that gives Chelsea an advantage, because now it doesn't mean as much to them, um, so they can just go out and play. This game, I think, will, for Chelsea, will be all about Hazard. It'll be all about... People are resigned to losing them, so it'll be about getting the trophy that he first won at Chelsea um, before he leaves. Uh, I don't think it's it's really about the club and their positioning anymore. They'll be uh, they'll be looking out for eating, I think. Um, Johnny, just to touch on Arsenal's season, as Brent was saying, Ch- Chelsea managed to stumble um, like a drunk who's been on uh, 12 pubs at Christmas over the line and get that final spot um, alongside with Spurs, Liverpool and Manchester City. Arsenal, who at times it looked like it was in their grasp, it was up for them whether they wanted it or not at times. And when the start of the season, they went, what, 22 games unbeaten? Didn't they have 20 games unbeaten? Yeah, Until, I think um, it was 22 games. Who was it beat them? Uh, who are you talking about? Arsenal. Arsenal. <coughs> Remember Arsenal had that great yeah. run and they went like 20 games unbeaten and then, who was it beat them? Oh, Southampton. Mm. Beat them. Um, so what's your, what did you, what's your take on Arsenal season? Like, they could end up, the, the, next week when we're talking, you just could have won the Europa League. But if you don't win the Europa League, you know, kind of that. Well, what way are you sitting on it? Like? Prior, to, prior to the Europa League final, um, I think if you had asked Arsenal fans at the start of the season, they would have taken where they are now. I don't think anyone's really kind of realistic thinking like <clears throat> they would want to get into the top four. But, Taking it, but not been. Yeah, but happy it was with more it. of a missed opportunity. Mm. When you think about it, like if we had a one that game at home to Brighton or at home to Palace like one of them games we'd have won and then won the last day I think we could have finished third I think we could have finished third but even if we had won I know in both home games we definitely would have finished third but I think I said at the time after Palace beat us like that's probably the game that's going to cost us top four and inevitably it did even the Brighton games well you know there were games we should have won 
And then everyone's going back to the Alabama Angus penalty and so on and so forth and all these games. But you could go back to the start of the season and the amount of games like we didn't beat Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, which Chelsea went 2-0 and then we came back 2-2 and then we gave away a slab of gold, gave them the win. You were very good against Liverpool as well. Yeah. The start of the season at the Emirates. At the Emirates we were, not away. <laughs> <laughs> but bar that, like bar the Liverpool result, like Arsenal haven't really got a real slapping off anybody in the league this year, which is... Bit nicer. It was usually we're used to going to Chelsea getting slapped and getting slapped at Liverpool, getting slapped at United and Man City. But we uh, we've improved in our race, but it'll take a while to really improve that squad. Hopefully this year or the summer, I may we'll get some decent players in. Uh, there's talk of us going after a lot of youngsters, which I'm all game for. Like you know, because I seen a thread was put up um one of my mates actually telling me. About if Twitter was around, you know, in the early nineties and mid nineties, no one like what the art. Don't know if you've seen it yourself. Yeah, the Burr Campbell. Yeah, about the Burr Art, about Burr Campbell and Ian Wright. What's Arsenal spending so much money on a twenty eight year old and all this year stuff? So, you know, these these players like we've seen with Torreira was good signing and Mendoza has been decent. He's kind of faded off towards the end of the season, but overall, I suppose you would have taken it, but still disappointed. But imagine we finished fourth. And Tottenham finished fifth and Tottenham in the Champions League and then we're knocked out of the Champions League because Tottenham won a European trophy. <laughs> and you know, that all oh, that one grinded me for really like so much. But we'll see, we'll see what happens where I'm a red man for the next week in both finals. <laughs> did Chelsea do that on Spurs when they won it? They did, yeah. Did they knock Spurs yeah, yeah, out of the Champions League then? But also Chelsea finished third by the way. That's yeah, and as soon as I said it, really, yeah, so, like yeah. I, I said it as well that they scraped into the top four. The first third. But they still <laughs> still felt like they scraped in because yeah, it did. But Spurs like, were in free fall in the league. Unbelievable. Um, if they'd have started the league like that, they would have been in serious trouble. Um, they were absolutely just just out of it, and they're obviously going for um, Champions League now. But yeah, it did. I know we both said they were four, but it did feel like Chelsea still yeah. stumbled over the line, and Spurs just somehow clung on by their teeth in the end. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the fans in Baku, and we talked about this was often Brenton when we had played for God. We'll not talk about the result. And um, the fans in Baku, now me and Brenton talked about we've had our thoughts on. I know your thoughts on it privately, like, but I think obviously you want everyone else to hear them. I just, I, like, I just don't get how anyone can argue that it is a good idea to have it there. I, I, I don't. And I know there's other people will say things about what other countries have done and different things people are using now. The fact that it was at Wembley, well, sure. The British government, and this isn't a politics podcast, uh, whatever they, they killed thousands in Iraq, but you still held it there, and there's no uh, complaints or fuss. That's a massive, big water about you, which I don't really agree with. A footballer can't go and play in Baku mm -hmm. for fear of his life. Mm -hmm. So we talk about this, I know it's an Arsenal player, so it's more probably annoying you more. That sort of would bring a red, red flag up for me if I was booking a final somewhere. Yeah. Um. As I've said, I know people probably cry and call me a hypocrite or whatever, but I am the biggest fan of Mkhitaryan. I think he's not been great for Arsenal. He's been all right in the Europa League, but besides the point, you know, someone tried to make the point about Arsenal fans yapping about he's been given off with this two hundred thousand pound a week player, but as soon as he can't play in the final, it's like a tragedy. But it's not. It's not about you know whether he's good or bad or whatever. It's like a footballer can't play a game of football in a European final. It's just it's ridiculous. It shouldn't happen. Um, a lot of people have made the point, and I'm sure people who are watching us think the same thing. It was Messi or Ronaldo, it would have been changed. It would have been no doubt, because because who they are. But because it's Mkhitaryan, it's like oh, we don't care. And Mkhitaryan, he could have he could have made a difference for us in the final. You know, he's he's capable of stepping up and like I guess it happened this year at their place. He just he was probably one of the best players for Arsenal. He scored two goals, <clears throat> and the Europa League he's been decent too. And you know, we won it with United a few years back, so. It is a loss, of course, and now we're relying on players like Danny Welbeck, who haven't played since before the new year. Yeah, people haven't spoken about that. It's it's Mkhitaryan's probably in the Arsenal squad, like one of a very small number who have been in major finals. Like, yeah. what do you mean? Yeah. So, like that experience could count massively on the day, going out to warm up, dealing with the crowd, dealing with a new stadium, etc., etc. And he's just not going to be there, and Arsenal are missing out on that. So. It's a big deal, like. Champions League final as well. I think he played for Dortmund against Bayern in was 2013. Now, exactly. So yeah, he's experienced of European finals. So it is it is a loss to have a player like that around the change room. So I don't know. Well, I think personally, I think it was for the players on that want to go do it for Mkhitaryan. Um, uh, everything seems to be going too well for Arsenal going into this final with the injuries Chelsea have been getting. But then again, Arsenal missing Mkhitaryan and missing Aaron Ramsey, which is 
a big thing, but I don't think I'm probably what kind of destroyed us at the end of the season with Miss Nora Ramsey. Seeing as we you met this shirt there the other day and you near killed me. <laughs> Would you, there was talk of Arsenal really boycotting it, now whether you know that was serious or not, maybe just more fans groups were saying it, which is still fair enough. Would you have been opposed to that or if Arsenal had turned around and said, listen, oh, he can't play, so we're not going to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, there you go, Chelsea, you have won it, we're not going to go. Because there is the nonsense with tickets as well and how far it is away to like, with both sets of fans. and yeah. like Even, even forget that it's the distance and the travel, the ticket allocation itself is a complete farce. Yeah, it is. Uh, what is it, an 80 odd thousand, is it an 80 thousand seater stadium? It, it's, it's something around that. And, and we got 6,000 each. Yeah, 12,000 for the fans. Yeah, mm-hmm. Arsenal sold about 3,000, I don't know how many Chelsea. Arsenal and Chelsea both sent about half back. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it got that bad that I am at the lowest membership for Arsenal, which is the red membership, and we could even buy tickets for the final, for your game final. You know. You can probably sell better right now. You, pro- you probably could. I've seen <laughs> UEFA were doing a competition, or the Europa League Twitter page were doing a competition, uh, enter our competition and win tickets to the Europa League final, but it says in the small detail, only tickets, no flights, no accommodation, no nothing. Like, who the f- wants to go to that shit? Like? See, in the rugby, they, their European finals is like a weekend. I don't know if that, how well that would work in um, in football, like, but it's a it's a, a set stadium. Uh-huh. So I think it was at St. James' Park this year. The Challenge Cup final was on the Friday. The European Cup final was on the Saturday. Mm-hmm. That kind of way, but it was set in stone. Yeah. This is where we're going. We're going to move it all here, get the whole operation there. And you could just tell it was... The way it was run, run, it was a lot more fan base. It's also easier for a lot of teams to get to, to get it. Like, but they could think of st- starting something like that there in football, where they make it at a location and it's a bit more accessible centrally for everyone. I'm not saying it has to always be at one of the bigger countries in Europe. It doesn't, but there's other countries that it could go to and it could be a lot more accessible to. Do you mean have the Europa League final and the Champions League? You final? could have. I'd have them on close to each other. Mm, yeah. And have them like in the same place. Well, Instead uh, of saying them on a, yeah, that's a good idea. If you, I think when they're, when they're talking about Baku, they're, they're saying Baku can only accommodate so many fans coming in out of their airport. And, you know, UEFA haven't taken into consideration how difficult it is for fans to get there, to get accommodation. You know, if it was going to be more than likely a Western European country that got to the final. So, how difficult it is. Like, a lot of Arsenal fans I know are having to travel from London. Istanbul, I have to have a wait over in Istanbul for nearly half a day and then get a flight from Istanbul to Baku. You know, it's ridiculous in this band, up to £1,500 or more. And it's like the Fire Festival football fans. <laughs> it's mad. <laughs> we watched that last night. It's decent. Um, it is, it's, it's, and as I said it before, like, it's just another example of major sporting governing bodies being complete assholes and only focusing on. I'm just talking about the ticket allocation alone here, only focusing on. The big hitters and the corporate uh, nonsense. To have an eighty thousand seater stadium and to only allow twelve thousand of the fans potentially to get those tickets mm-hmm. is that it should be eighty thousand or say it's eighty five thousand, five thousand corporate, forty thousand each for fans if you can get them sold. And whenever you don't get sold, come back in and then we'll resell them right again. Yeah. That's the way it should be. That stadium should just be completely Chelsea and Arsenal. The whole thing rocking. The, the atmosphere will probably be shade. Um, uh, something Brandon mentioned earlier. Um. Some of the few, some of the views that the fans have of bought tickets is, it's like you may as well not be there. You may as well just watch on TV. Yeah, it's absolutely shocking. You can't even see the pitch basically. It's terrible. <laughs> These Olympic stadiums are shades. And West Ham found out this year, and when they moved into the Olympic stadium, it's terrible. There's no. They, they, they shouldn't. They should host. Turn it on if you want to host Olympic games yet or yeah, track and field them. events. But for games like a rugby match or a football match or whatever, it just they're not accessible. But they're just not ideal. You no. need to be close enough to the pitch. Like even when the new Emirates was built, like it was a wee bit further back, you know, behind yeah. the goals. I'm sure that was a complete culture shock for anyone that did sort of Henry for the twenty years before that. Yeah. To go and stand at the Emirates. You're standing basically on top of the players at Henry and there was that wee gap. Uh, I think it's just time one of the goals, the other one's not as bad for some reason. I don't know why. Whatever. But uh, yeah, there's a significant gap there behind the North Bank, so it, it was it was strange, but it's not too bad. Like when you're starting, no, it's not. It's, it's not, it's not as bad as a running track. Like but no, it's not as bad as a running track. Um, so yeah, it's Chelsea. It's cousin v cousin. It's Chelsea v Arsenal in the final. Um, the play each other. This will be the fourth time they play each other in finals. And mm. um, Arsenal have won two. Chelsea have won one. Um, so Chelsea have a chance to level this. 
You've played each other, I can't even do the maths here, but Arsenal have won 176 times, Chelsea 163. So there's a wee bit more than that. How do you use, uh, automatically, like, what do you think it's going to go? I'll go with you first, Brenton. Like, what's your predictions for Wednesday night? How do you think it will go? Um, <clears throat> Cup final's a weird, weird thing, like, because form obviously goes completely out the window. And you know, we're talking about injuries and players who are missing and stuff like that, but all you need to do is... is Look back at an example I obviously go to is Chelsea in the Champions League final. They were missing so many players, like, and the big Baron who were cert the most at home as well, uh, the best right. team in Europe that season, like, um, and proved that by just going and winning the next season. Um, but I can see goals. Um, I can see like a three-two either way, something like that. Um, with Rudiger missing. Uh, and Aubameyang and Lacazette I think they'll both play because why wouldn't you go up against David Luiz there's always a mistake in him Christensen hasn't played enough this season he's looked dodgy at times you can get him behind him uh, so I think Arsenal will definitely score and we also know that Arsenal's defence is their weak point um, yeah. I think uh, I think um, Hazard will be up, will be up for it and I can see him getting a goal or two, hopefully swinging it in the boys' way. But um, I, I can definitely see goals, like, and I can see it being entertaining. What's your prediction, John? Uh, there's no way we're like keeping a clean sheet. <laughs> there's no Either way. team? No, like, we have the ice cool boys up top. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like Brandon said, it goes. It could go either way. I honestly, I don't know. I don't know who's going to win it. I think Aubameyang and Giroud are the two top goal scorers in it this season. I, I would um I'd be more worried facing Giroud than facing Higway. Anyway. Hundred percent. So if Oh I, I would start Giroud. Anyway he's gonna start, I'm telling you right now. If Giroud is starting, I'd be like, oh fuck, here we go. He's gonna Especially if Mustafi's playing center. Of course Mustafi's playing center. Oh, geez, we haven't got anybody else. <laughs> and Giroud is just saying with a contract like and he'll be mm-hmm. like up against Arsenal and what may be wanting to score like. But hey but sorry about start Higway like, England, mark my words like. Even though they were right started, like, yes, I'm telling you. Giroud's top goal scorer in Europe League. Yeah. yeah. You still think Sarri will start? Yeah. Uh, be I sad. think the other sticking point with the Europa League's been Arsenal's goalkeeping choice. Uh, I, yeah, I wanted to touch on that. That's um, good. We, we, we kind of talked about it off camera and thought that with the whole Mkhitaryan stuff, Chelsea, someone in Chelsea has obviously made news. Well, we all knew. Check was going back. Top shit house, right? Yeah, to, to do to do it when Arsenal were obviously in the middle of all this bullshit. It's obviously if you do the same thing, European final against one of your your London rivals, like. Um, even before all that, I wouldn't have started checking the final because I just think for our game, I think Burton Ash is better for you know starting up the play up in the back. Um, what do you think about that whole thing about you know campaigns like the FA Cup you play or the Carabao Cup? You play a certain players the whole way, and then in the final, like you have to play them because you've played them the whole thing. I and wouldn't. You, no, like, that shit, like, you have to be ruthless. But Arsenal have done it even with anger. You know, he played Ospina, uh, he played Fabianski in the two thousand fourteen final, and we hadn't won anything in years. Aye. And everybody's like, "Fuck me, just play your strongest team." But we got through it okay. Uh, listen, Patrick Jack's top professional. Like he's a great goalkeeper. Still, don't get me wrong. Like, for any Arsenal fan that thinks Patrick Jack doesn't want to win the Europa League on Wednesday, it's a fucking fool. Yeah. Obviously, he does like. What if he does a carries? <sighs> he's not going to go and do that on purpose. Like, no, 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 he's not. I, mean, I, mean, I never but, didn't mean but that. But he, if, he, if, he makes a, if he makes a howler, he makes a mistake. Yeah, right? he'll, he'll, be, he'll be called the Asian Jack again, obviously. Well, like, Arsenal fans will be all over, but Lennon could do it too. Oh, uh, yeah. So, like, you know, but there's more pressure on Jack now. But, the, there, but then the thing is, I thought about it yesterday, you know, if Lennon does get the nod, He's going to be thinking, oh shit, maybe I wasn't expecting to play and all the pressure's on me now because the fans wanted me to start and I really have to have a big game. So the cup, like, he's been really, really solid since he came into the team and he's a bit rocky, but he's really, really found his form now. And he saved us from getting... I think he's probably Arsenal's third best player this year. Yeah, no, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, definitely. The two of front, Lennon and Jack, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ramsey's been injured too much, but the two off front. Yeah. And then Lennon. I think with the two off front, it's probably... Gives you the best hope of getting a result, especially like we saw the Obama and played against Valencia. When he is up for it, like he is up for it, and yep. Lacazette just they both complement each other. 
So represent the food that are missing on potentially campaign now as well. But it just I seen them go one night, it just seems like everything's just going nicely for us. Like Chelsea have got these big injuries, the key players, and it just seems like ah oh, no, it's just we're gonna balls it or something, we're gonna do something stupid. It's, it's it, I, I, I know exactly now. what you're saying, and it's it, I sort of feel like it's all tilting towards Eden Hazard to have one of the games of yeah, his life because yeah, it is, isn't it? Chelsea you have to pay under sixteens behind them. You know what I mean? The, the thing is So he's gonna be like, right, I'm I'm going to Madrid here in two weeks, but I'm just gonna win this and then see. Hmm. Being on Niles and Ballard before he got injured at the Emirates, you know, had really good games against Hazard, they're yeah. really with him well, so <clears throat> he's gonna to need to do the same. And he Nate on Nash played really well well second half against Valencia, he had a rocky start against Valencia, but Understandable, and that's they were like Geddes was just going straight after him. Geddes yeah. is unbelievable talent, yeah. And that stadium as well was absolutely bouncing, yeah. They're like literally on top of you, yeah. So yeah. He, he found his form and he, he actually sat up at Bobby Young's, was it? Uh, he goal? completely nullified, yeah. Geddes in towards the end of it, like, yeah. which is really good. Um, <laughs> Listen, it's, it's gonna be a tough game, it could go either way. It really depends who he wants to turn up. If the Arsenal, like can turn up and play the best that we know they can play. Like if Aubameyang and Lacazette are all on it and Ozil, like Ozil really needs to be on it. He can't be pissing about walking about throwing the arms up in the air like he always does. Like he needs to get stuck in. I remember a few years ago, uh, at the Emirates when we beat Chelsea, it was a three 0 thing. Alexis Sanchez still playing. Yeah. Uh, Kante came out of him and he just turned him and just left him for dead. Like I've never seen anyone leave Kante like that before. But he needs to have a game like that. If Kante is not playing, it'll be obviously an advantage for Arsenal. But somebody will step up. And he didn't all fight Jorginho. If that Jorginho did dictate the player, then because Jorginho has been brilliant the last couple of games, he's so been really, really good. Like that's, um, that's a job for Jack or Torreira to get in them. Like. Yeah, and as you say, if <clears throat> if Ozil's going to be playing there, like Jorginho's the type of player that Ozil could, could get at, like because he's Ozil's not the quickest, but Jorginho's not quick. Like he's quite brain, That's the only thing. Yeah. If, if that it leaves the midfield kind of exposed in a way because Ozil's not going to track back. So it leaves a big job for Jack and Torreira. But Torreira is a workhorse and you know he does the job too, man. He's a bit like Kante, but Kante does the job for like a whole team. Jeez, the man's incredible. But like Torreira really needs to be on it, and I think he can go for it. I think what's happened with McIntyre will spur the Arsenal boys on. But then again, well, Hazard's last game as well, for Chelsea, well, I think we all know behind the scenes it's going to be his last game. They'll go for it too. It's a European final. Like, they want to be at their rivals, they don't want to have each other's fans having I, I think it, I think it'll be better than the Champions League final as a game. I think it'll be a brilliant game this one on Wednesday night. As you say, though, like the we've we've seen this season, both teams be shite, but we've also seen like when they show up, like they can they can play a ball. Like, like Chelsea beating Man City at home. Exactly, yeah. Chelsea against Man City was they should were, have been Liverpool only for Sturridge to just yeah. smash one in, and Alisson had a brilliant game that night. Yeah, um, and Arsenal right through the Europa League, like have been top notch when they turned up. Like some of the goals Arsenal scored as well. We watched a bit of it earlier. Like even in the league, it's just been ridiculous. Yeah, it was big Spurs at the Emirates. Aubameyang, um, I think, did he draw level? He yeah, he drew level. level. And the house came off in Drunk Cree Road. It, it, it's such a finish. <laughs> Aubameyang does this. He, 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 he doesn't, he's not necessarily known for, like, you know Aguero, as soon as he gets into the six yard box, he's going to smash it into the roof of the net. Like, mm-hmm. Suarez does that too, he just tries and hoofs it. Whereas Aubameyang seems to caress it, you know, the way like mm-hmm. Henri used to do. Yeah. Like, like is that, well, the Thunder Bastard, the thing, like, oh, he'll right, right, he he the into the back of the net, yeah. not a bother to him. Whereas Aubameyang's sort of like, no, I'm just going to curl this in and have the crack with the ball here when it goes in the back of the net. Yeah. Like, his goal against Valencia, the long ball, mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't even whacked that hard, it was sort of like, you know, uh, it was like, it was sort of like it, yeah. mm, didn't want to hurt the ball, bounce in past the goalkeeper. I think, I think it says a lot about Lacazette. Lacazette got voted player of the season for Arsenal, you know, and Bamiang scored all these goals. But I've said, like, if one of them was going to go, I'd rather keep Lacazette because he just doesn't work for the if team. If we lose one of the fun three, it'd be one I'd be looking at. Yeah. Liverpool. There was talk of Barcelona and stuff after, and I was like, get away. Get the fuck away from Mark Players. I was like, I root Barcelona anyway. We, we've actually <coughs> chinned Barcelona. Whatever Liverpool did to them at night at Anfield was completely wrecked them, and good for it. Um, <coughs> What what would be your lineup then? Well, you don't think you have much choice. Like, <laughs> um, it's pro. Well, do you want me to tell you what I would do? Yeah. Or what I think Sorry, will do, like, because they're two completely different things. Like, Go with what you will do. Well, that's sorry, do what he'll come do on tonight. Well, for a start, like, I think you play your strongest team, like, um, and I think it's Kappa, Aspel, Quetta. It's going to be Christensen, David Luiz, Emerson is what I would play. You'd probably play Alonso. Um, if he plays Alonso, he's a wrong one. Yeah, I don't yeah. play Alonso. Yeah. I don't really think so. Not, yeah. not this season, I mean. 
Jorginho, no choice again. Kovacic, Barkley, it's going to be. Um, Hazard, William, just over Pedro and Giri. That's what I would do. You got, at least you got Higuain and Pedro <coughs> on the bench staying mm. in case uh, an injury. Hudson Alloy and Loftus Cheek. That was Rudiger, Rudiger um, injuries just. And Kante. And if Kante, Kante, if Kante is injured. If Kante's fit, obviously you play him instead of Kovacic. So you keep Barkley in? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Barkley, was, Barkley came off the bench against uh, Frankfurt and was class. He drove at them and he absolutely smashed his penalty and then. I like that Barkley, uh, he just gives you a lot, a lot more energy. Yeah, Kovacic I like him. Sometimes it looks like he's ready to go to the no people's home. Yeah. He's had enough. I just want to go play a chase and drafts here, drink tea and have a crack. Like. Barkley's had good spells this season, like he's been underrated. Yeah, he's been good now, he has been quite good. Johnny, what's your predicted lineup for Chelsea then? Uh, I think he will probably start Pater Cech. That is just wild. And I wouldn't start. What's your, what's your start lineup? Well, my start lineup is Leno, absolutely. Uh, like I said, because of our injuries, Maitland Niles, right wing back. There's no real choice but to play on the staff lane. Oh no. Uh, he's not playing Back Mon- on top. He's not playing Montreal <laughs> in there or something. And no, he's, 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 too, he's too vulnerable at centre back as well. You've seen against Napoli, he was getting in behind as well. Luckily, it didn't really cost us that much, but he's not a centre back, so no, I wouldn't. Uh, Especially if Chelsea plays here, like, he would just. Yeah, you, you, need, you need someone. Like, like me and me. As much as Mustafi is an absolute glade, he'd be probably better in the era in Montreal. So Mustafi, Socrates, and Kshelna. Kshelna's been. Unreal since he came back. Uh, class man, left wing back. Trevor Archaka with Ozil, number 10, then Laka and Abamian. Just have to go for it. So 3 5. Um, 3 3 5 2. Uh. Oof. I see, I wouldn't. I, like, Chelsea's straightforward, that's fair enough. But if I was Arsenal, I would go. I wouldn't blame Mustafi because he just has the love runs. Well, I just don't trust him. <coughs> I don't trust him to do anything decent. I would go with. I'd go with a flap. Four, and go Kachelny and Mustaf, uh, not Mustafi, um, Socrates. Socrates, and then go um, Maitland Niles and Monreal Klasnitz, but just go flat back four, just go four, and then put someone else in midfield, do a bit of run about and do some more midfield rather than Gunduzi. Put Gunduzi in, in with Shaq and Torreira, or you know, a Wogan, so, you know, someone else in midfield. Well, go that way because have done with the backpack for us, but we all left back from class last at that point. Even that, they've done yeah, that before. Even that, but uh, I think it's just because now Mkhitaryan isn't. You know, we've only really got missing. we've only got a Wobi really, to the, and we've well uh, back like to come on. You mean? Like? Yeah, we've we've um the hand closed door. Arsenal played two games over the last week, and well back scored a hat trick one of them. So he'd be in the squad. Like, he, oh, yes, he's in. He's in the travel yeah, squad. Yeah. Arsenal have a couple of youngsters going over, like Saka and stuff. Who've he's been. Touted one of the next best, best things for Arsenal, like he's top goal scorer under 18 to under 20 days, like so. Um, there, there's options. Eddie and Kevy will be on the bench probably. Um, Steady Eddie. Yeah, scored a good goal against Burnley. So I think that I think that's the only formation he can go with. And sorry, will obviously be aware of that, and he'll he'll set up his team to counter that. But I think that's really the only option Arsenal are going to have, just because of the players that are missing. And uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> if it's Mustafi, like uh, Mustafi will definitely start. Arsenal will play the three centre backs, no doubt they will. I wouldn't do that. I think I just play straight in the Chelsea. If I am Chelsea fans and Mustafi's there, even if I'm Chelsea's players, I'm just like, well, we're gonna give Eden Hazard the ball here and he's gonna run at you. Yeah, it's gonna be that. Good luck. That'll, that'll, be, that'll be the job of Maitland Niles and one of the centre minutes to get back and help. But I, I think as well, I would. Oh, I would. I still think Chelsea. Would be my slight favourites, but if I was just going managers, knowing what he's like in a Europa League final, yeah. who I am, right, I would give him the nod because we were all over his Sevilla team that year in Klopp's first Euro- European final with us, all over on half time, won it up at half time, Berlin Sturridge goal, and then he completely bamboozled everyone. I still don't know what he did in the second half, but Klopp doesn't either. He was just like, what the f. It's something that I haven't spoken about, you know, leading up so far. And it's good that we're talking about it now. Like, is, is the managers and the pressure that's on Sorry to win his first trophy ever as a manager, like, which is absolutely wild. Like, with, with the he gets a very good reputation around Europe. Like, Juventus, he gets it in Italy anyway. Yeah, Juventus looking at him, apparently, up there as well. Where, um, and he has never won a trophy like, for a club like Juventus to be looking at you is a bit weird. Um, when they've won what's it, the last 900 leagues in Italy, yeah, like to be going and maybe managing Ronaldo. Like, 
absolutely what an absolute privilege to manage a player like, like such. <laughs> More of a privilege than manage Ronaldo, in my opinion. <laughs> it is, it is. Correct, you um, <laughs> to, uh, <clears throat> to see, um, you know, the pressure's going to be on him. If, if he thinks in his head, right, you know, this could be me getting the United's job or not, winning this trophy. And to come up against somebody like Emery, who just knows how to win this, this tournament. Um, it's just lethal in the Europa League. Like, if he ever turns yeah. it into Champions League form, <clears throat> it's a big. It, that's a that's a big advantage to have going in for Emery. Like, no one in his head mentally have won this like three times already. Cut the pressure as well, because if they can, with Emery has won it so many times, he'd be thinking everyone expects me to probably go and win this because he's won it with three, three or four times, is it? And sorry, like you said, they have Champions League football. There's no real pressure on them, but you know, I think Arsenal it could again spur them on to go and do it but there's been so many times this year in the league where we've had the opportunity to go on and do it